I'm Kitsune Risu. I'm a writer from filmfiction.net, and you're listening to the MBS Show. Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 77. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is James Cork. Hey there, Norman. Hey there, James. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm here throwing my ponies. I'm chatting with my friends. It's a good day. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Had a nice nap. I wish I did something else, but hey, naps are fun. Mm, that's good. You know what they? You know what Rainbow does? Of course, they're fun because Rainbow does takes them all the time. Yeah, but she takes them on clouds. I wish I could take naps on clouds. That would be interesting. No, you know, she has never taken a nap on a. Well, not that I remember, because every time she's taking a nap and she's part of the episode, she's sleeping on a branch. <laughs> that is true. She's sleeping on a tree branch. That is true. That is true. So, anyway, moving on to our next person, our guest for this week is Kitsune Ritsu. Kitsune Ritsu, right? Kitsune... That's Kitsune Ritsu. All right, Kitsune Ritsu. How are you doing, man? I'm fine. Thank you very much for acknowledging me as a person, by the way. That was very kind of you. <laughs> you are a person. You are a person. I've seen you in real life. Some, sometimes I question that myself, but hey, you know, it's, it's great to be here. Before the episode ends, the twist is that Kitsune is actually a fire hydrant. <laughs> I wish I was a fire hydrant. <laughs> yeah, anyway, hi. Hello. So, we met in Singapore, right? During one of the Hasbro event? Yes, we did. If I mean, if you can call that an event, yeah. But, you know, it was, it was quite fun. You came down all the way from Malaysia to check out this uh, thing that was happening, uh, a local event, and... Uh, you know, I had no idea who you were at the time, and you had no idea who I was, and that usually is the case when two strangers meet, so nothing wrong there at all. But true, true. Um, we made friends, and apparently now I'm here. Indeed, and the interesting part was, we came for the event, but we stayed for the after party. <laughs> if by after party you mean that we went to all the uh, Toys R Us in, in the shopping district and raided them for blind bags and you know, oh, pretty God. much... How many hours did Think you guys... Of the children. <laughs> yeah, I know. Think of the I children. Our, our group bought like 55 or 60 in total. <laughs> oh my God. We... And you have to... No, that was just in the one store. And after that, we went all over the place. You know, just absolutely just raping the whole... Um, all the shops of blind bags. And it was, it was pretty horrific. You know, don't you ever feel bad when you're oh my god i'm taking all of these blind bags yes but what about it and then and then well, this little you, girl comes in and she's like oh, i'm going to get the blind bags and the box the box is empty and she's like mom there are none left well, it's, the it's okay because we've got you know you know all the blind bags have the codes right yeah and you yeah, can actually tell what's inside so we got all of the good ones and we left the crappy ones for the kids so i'm not sure i feel less, I feel less guilty but they get something and they don't know what's inside it's fine yes they get the crappy ones <laughs> by the way which are the crappy ones careful your answer might be a danger may put you in danger well there's there's this one called rarity <laughs> which is i am going to rip you apart <laughs> la, 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 la. That, I don't know what that is, but that doesn't sound like ripping anything, really. Oh, no, my. No, I'm, I'm going to Arnold Wow. Oh, my. But anyway, anyway. Uh, it was fun meeting you, and oh, boy, was the blind back hunt um, crazy. Uh, and anyway, before we start the show, I need to ask you the four important questions. And question number one is, who is your favorite character? My favorite pony is, is a difficult question because I kind of like them all. But uh, my favorite pony is... Twist. Hmm. Really? Oh, that's right. Yes. 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 A twist fan. Oh my god, that's such a good answer. You know, I wish Dan was here because if Dan was here, he'll go gaga over this because another twist fan. Awesome. I like her because everyone hates her, so I kind of <laughs> like her ironically, but I love her lisp. No, I do. I do like her a lot. She's very cute. Um, and I have a thing for her ponies and glasses. <laughs> oh my. So I, I kind of just. Really. She's not legal yet. <laughs> Indeed. I didn't, you know, you know, human age ratio is a questionable thing. Let's, okay, let's, uh, let's just let this move Let's move right. on. Let's move on. What's your favorite episode then? What's my favorite episode? I, I don't even remember. I'm going to actually have to... Hold on. I'm opening up my folder of episodes. I'm sorry. Just give me a second. Oh, my Little Pony. Okay. 
My favorite episode, I don't know, is, do I have to include anything in season three? Because Sure, um, everything's game, even Equestria Girls. Wow, yes. so not Equestria Girls. I can I can discount that one immediately. <laughs> I'm going to put Equestria Girls aside. That was not my favorite episode. It's not It's not really an episode. It's not really anything. <laughs> it, it no, was, it, it is. It's a, it's a toy commercial that lasts for an hour and a half. A very really good That's, one, like that. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'll give you that one. I liked... Damn. There's so many, you know? I like Sister Who Social. I'm actually going to say Sister Who Social. It's mm. one of my favorites. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't... Oh, that, <laughs> just stumbled on that, I'm sorry. I, I don't know if that's actually my absolute favorite, but that's the one that's sticking out in my head right now. Oh, I thought it would be Call of the Cutie. didn't give me time to prepare, so I'm just going to have to drop names. And oh. I'm dropping that is, you have to be quick on your feet. Social. Right on your desk. Sister Hoop Social. Okay, I'll take that. So... Um, I thought it would be Call of the Cutie. Why Call of the Cutie? Oh, because... Because Wait. twist. Yes. <laughs> no, you see, you have to take... You have to take the episodes as a whole. Like, Call of the Cutie was alright because it had the twist. But if twist <laughs> is the only thing that makes it good, I wouldn't call it a good episode overall. Okay. You know what I mean? I understand. So, I would... Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I completely see your point because in my case... Uh, one of my, my, I will count it my favorite episode ever is Hurricane Fluttershy, and Rarity is nowhere to be seen in that episode. So. Yeah, but that's, that's like, the benefit of the episode, don't you think? Yeah, but. Uh, I killed you. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, it's, it's that, it's exactly what you said. Sometimes you have to take the episode as a whole. It makes sense that you don't really need to take an episode where your favorite character is in. It's, oh, okay. Yeah, that 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 would be pretty much what I mean by that. I mean, Hurricane Flash was an, was another pretty good one. I did like that one. Mm. Yes, yes, it was, and so underrated. People usually forget about that episode. Oh. It had it had its moments. It really did. Well, well, but I have I to probably... say, your answer is quite a twist. Yes, <laughs> uh, I can go on with this. But anyway, um, let's move on to the third question. How did you become a fan of the show? How did I become a fan of the show is a long story, my friend, that stretches back years and years to the start of this very phenomenon, Ooh. which we call My Little Pony. Um, when I was a young girl, I used to watch the show. Um, <laughs> like, I, I used to watch a lot of shows uh, when, I was, when I was younger, and My Little Pony was actually just one of the many shows that I, I watch uh, because it came in these big, huge compilation three-hour tapes that, you know, after, after uh, I don't know, kindergarten, school or whatever, I just come home and, uh, oh, yeah. and watch it along with uh, Captain N, you know, you remember all those? Oh, I love uh, Captain N! Uh, yeah. Strawberry Shortcakes, uh, Sophie tapes. and her families, yeah, all these, all these, uh, you know, the Super Mario show, you <laughs> know, all these, all these kind of things. Um, and My Little Pony was just one of them. So, I watched it. I didn't necessarily like it, but I watched it. And I also follow a lot of cartoons because it's kind of like in the industry that I work in, I, I do a lot of art, you know, and stuff like that in, in, in the industry. And I noticed that Lauren Faust was doing the new My Little Pony show. And I have always fo followed uh, Lauren Faust ever since uh, the Powerpuff Girls. And I loved... Um, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, which she also worked on. So it was pretty much a no-brainer for me to check it out because uh, I liked her stuff and I was already familiar with My Little Pony. Uh, having been exposed to it um, as a young child, I wasn't that you know hesitant about going into something that was actually meant for a, a different target audience. So on the very first day that it was released, I was there. The very first day. And I have been a fan since that day. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah, that, you're almost like a pa patient zero in uh, in, 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 a, in a zombie apocalypse kind of thing. It's like, oh my god, you're kind of like the first brownie. <laughs> well, I you know, pretty much discovered it. it. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still in my straight jacket right now because people think I'm crazy <laughs> for watching the show. But yeah, I mean, pretty much, I guess, I guess you could call me that. But I was, yeah, Do I was wrong. Do you still get visited by the little dragon that tells you to burn things? <laughs> no, no, I, but I, I have a few gremlins that live under my sink. 
if that's the same thing, really. <laughs> oh god, you're, you're kind of lucky. I have this drummer who keeps telling me to burn things. So yeah, it, it was a it was a very natural kind of thing. I I fell in love with the artistic style first and foremost because it was presented in a very different way. Um, I'm sure everybody here has seen the older gen Little Pony shows, especially Gen uh, 3.5. <laughs> basically have these big swollen heads and the ability to speak without actually moving their mouth. So, you know, the first thing the first thing is always the first impression and the first impression really got me. So there you go, basically. Long story. Oh, okay. I've been a fan for a long time. So basically really? you're a Lauren Faust fan then? I am a Lauren Faust fan. I, I mean, I followed her stuff. I still follow her stuff even after Ponies. Like, you know, the uh, the stuff that she does for Marvel and... No, no, not Marvel. DC. Yeah, yeah. She, she's doing uh, Super Best Friends Forever. Yeah. Well, what do you think of uh, Wonder Over Yonder? Yes, with that one. I don't I don't really want to say anything yet about that. Mm, it's it's out... If I if Looking at this, uh, look at uh, IMDb page. Um, not yeah, I gotta, sure. I gotta... I gotta... You know, I, I don't want to make any how do you say uh preconceptions yeah preconceptions without actually being familiar with it and i'm not familiar with it that much yet mm. so i'm gonna reserve judgment until i actually get to uh, i can't wait it. because it's august 16 and it's out i guess so i want to watch yeah, it, it just just came out last week isn't it? Mm. yeah it's super new it did look pretty interesting though. like yeah. i like the character design looks brilliant well, I, I'll hold my judgment for that show later because I have not seen it. And but she only she only did she only did the uh, creation. I mean the uh, what do you call that? The, the kind of design, the... right? Because no, she's still, the producer. Yeah, still by her husband. No, she's the producer. Oh, she is. Yeah, she she is the producer and character designer and uh, and Greg McCracken. I think he's the one writing executive the, the producer. Yeah. Yes, creator. He he always does all the creation in all the past ones as well. Like he, you know, um, for Pop of Girls and. But I do see I do see a lot of names in the cast that I like a lot, like Jack McBrayer, uh, you know Tom Kenny, which is a classic, and Aziz and Sari. I don't know how they got that guy, but he's brilliant, and I like him a lot. So I'm, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait to watch a couple more episodes first before I okay. I see because like I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring this back to My Little Pony because apparently we're wandering over. Yonder <laughs> on the top yonder in. But um oh, the oh, first oh. Yes. The first couple of episodes for My Little Pony Friendship was Magic did not actually strike me as extremely well written. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna be yelling at me right now, whoever heard me, like, you know, they say, Oh, how dare you, how dare you say bad things about the series? But in all fairness, uh, Lauren Faust is a great world builder, she has a lot of really good ideas. But she didn't write the first two episodes that well. I didn't really. Agree. I am completely on your boat. I agree with you. So I am not going to gel at you. I, I, I'm siding with you. I completely agree. Thank you. It's nice to have episodes, guys on my side. The episodes are very rushed. They go way too quick. And they cram in way too much information. And the characters are not fully well developed. Yeah, it's the it's first episode. It's so formulaic. That's my problem with it. It was just basically the beats of, of a very stereotypical type of episode. Like, oh, okay, we're just going to see each one of these guys one by one. They're going to have their little moment. And we're going to move on. So it was basically, uh, you know... A very stereotypical, obvious breakfast kind of show. You you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get your eggs and your bacon and your toast. There there wasn't really anything uh, surprising, innovative, yeah, special, yeah. or different about it. I mean, the story itself for the second half was yeah, it was all right. But the but then again, they had the formula where they keep trying to force the whole like oh you know each pony uh, represents the ele- a specific element and. We all know, uh, everyone out there listening, all we all know that the elements are very loose in what they mean towards the ponies. Well, like we Apple know Jack that buys more than any of the other ponies in the show. Uh, no, we know that now, but uh, when we were starting watching it, we definitely were in a world of how of big of a liar she can get to be. Exactly, exactly my point. Because you see, by by tying them to the elements, they're just creating more problems for the future for themselves. So I'm not sure what you know her idea was 
for the whole kind of thing. But it was giving me a lot of vibes of like the whole Power Ranger kind of deal, you know, from the first two well, episodes. I have the feeling that the first two episodes set it up because Lauren Forrest wanted the, the show to be about magic and Hasbro wanted it to be about friendship. So kind of like balancing... No, 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 no. no. Hasbro yeah. wanted it to be about money. <laughs> no, actually... Yeah, yeah, um, that is another element. No, but actually... what <laughs> element origin- of money, yes. That, that way. Actually, what um, Lauren wanted to do was uh, Monster of the Week kind of show, like those Sentai movies. But what Hasbro wanted to do was um, kind of instill friendship and stuff let, let it be educational kind of deal so Hasbro forced Lauren into it so that's what we got I would have well, been okay with the monster of the day I, I love I would have been okay the, too but but then you would have you would have missed episodes like Suited for Success which has no monsters at all true or Sweet and Elite which is basically all about Becoming famous and not forgetting your roots. Oh, uh, wait, those two, it, those two episodes have Rarity in it, right? <laughs> and Rarity is the monster, so they're I argue pretty another, much. Oh, I kill you, I kill you. And so you're not going to end let's this episode on. live. Let's move on, let's move on. <laughs> you're not going to finish this alive. But however, I wanted to bring something up before we are moving on completely. I completely agree with you on the whole cliche things during the, the pilot, but it did break one cliche and yeah, I keep going back to Rarity, but when she cut off her tail, I don't think any of us saw it coming. Mm-hmm. I think we all were surprised. You don't expect I the was, pretty, pretty I girl. Was yeah. I was surprised in that, but then again, she never did anything that generous again. And that that is one of my big beefs about this. What are you talking because, about? No, what can you say? Yeah. Oh, she, come on. She, she, she does this all the time. No, she turned into a complete... You're going to have to bleep me, Norman, because... Bring out Sweetie Belle, but she turned into a complete... That's not a word! Like, seriously, in <laughs> in um, Sister Who's Social, she was, you know, estranged, estranging her own sister in uh, Secret of My Excess. She she tricked a, a little baby dragon, you know, a, a little precious baby dragon. Okay, 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 stop, 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 <laughs> stop right there. No, 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 Little brothers. Yes, I have two, in fact. Okay, do you have little sisters? No, I don't, but sometimes... I, I have a little, si- I have a little sister. One. I have a little sister. The situation between Rarity and Sweetie Belle is exactly what I live my life with my sister. To a T. <laughs> Completely exactly the same. So now, you're saying okay. that you are Rarity? I am Rarity, yeah, totally. But no, okay, <laughs> you're a- secret, of, secret of my excess. When... Spike is looking at Rarity and Rarity is like, oh, this, this ruby, ruby is magnificent. That is supposed to happen inside Spike's head. She's not roma- no, romancing no, her. She's no. not womanizing her. No. Not at all. No, You're getting no, it, it wrong. No, You're getting it wrong. Her ma- no, that uh, okay, guys, guys, guys. guys. I, 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 no, 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 no. You're getting no, it wrong. Argue, Rarity, no. After the show, I'm going to have a big, long debate with you. Uh, oh, you are, you are, you are. Oh, that's on. You don't mess oh with my, my wife. I'm gonna, I'm, I, I mess with whoever's wife I want. Okay. I'm going to. I'm what have I started? That's, that's how we do it in my country, right? Oh, in my country, we kill bulls with our bare hands. Come at me, bro. <laughs> Let's move on. Oh my. Oh boy. So anyway, um, kids and officially the show has derailed. <laughs> I know. Anyway, kids and me. You can edit this later, Norman. Don't worry. Uh, this is gonna be fun. Anyway, kids and I have another question, right? Yes, one last one before we move on. And <laughs> what do your family and friends think about your love for the show? <laughs> my family and friends think about it well uh, I've been actually blessed with a very understanding family and a quite understanding group of friends who also are in you know the whole realm of arts uh, you know cartoon I got friends who do in, in cartoons you know uh, design and everything so we're a little bit more open minded about the whole deal they don't like it themselves well some of them do some don't but otherwise I've never actually ever got any grief about liking the show and I've been very open about it because I never felt there was anything that I particularly needed to hide. As for my family, uh, my parents and I also have an understanding. 
uh, they don't ask too many questions and I get to do what I want. So <laughs> in the case of MLP, they know, they absolutely know that uh, I am a middle-aged man who is a fan of the show and they encourage it greatly. Wow, that's awesome. Um, that is very really good. I there was actually kind of one time, like I have a, I have a, um, a display case with all of the base, you know, all the pony dolls that I like, I bought or had to ship in and stuff, and they're all nice with the hair done and everything and and all you know set up. And my father walks into my room one day and he's yeah. So basically, I do live with my parents because uh, Asian you know Asian cultures are pretty much like that homestuck. Um, and I live with my parents as well. I completely understand you. Yeah. Um, um, so my, my, my dad walks in and he's actually like, you know, standing by the display case and actually looking at all of the dolls. And it was a bit awkward <laughs> at that point. And I was just like, yeah, that's, that's what I do. And he picks up the doll of vinyl scratch. Okay. And he's oh. like looking at it closely and he puts it down, he turns to me, and the only thing he says to me is, well, I hope you didn't pay too much for it. The production values on these are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks out. No, no, uh, it's true, it's true. For vinyl, it looks bad because the eyes. Yeah, the, the, the eye, he was looking on the eyes. Exactly, the eyes are, he was the eyes are horrible. Yeah, they, that was basically it, really. Mm. So, yeah, my, you know, I, I got no problems with my parents. They're pretty cool with the whole thing. Well, that's awesome because... Um, that sounds adorable. It's yeah. like, oh, I hope you didn't pay much for this. They look like... That's not a word! <laughs> Pretty much. But other than that, I, I see you've got the Zakura, uh, Growing the Dark Zakura, and um, yes. all the main six. So, that's awesome. I've got I've got Luna as well. You mean Nightmare Moon? Yes, sorry. Yes, Nightmare Moon. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because I'm, Luna came in another set. The cool version of Luna. <laughs> Right. Uh, uh, yes. What the hell? Are you messing <laughs> with all of my favorite ponies or what? Oh my god, man. You're not, you're not <laughs> <best time. laughs> I will take you up on that, sir. We oh, shall have fast after the show. Alright, gentleman's duel. Oh. I throw my glove at you. I demand a satisfaction. I will stick my unicorn horn up your extremities. Uh, let's roll up a character and see who wins. <laughs> Individual with my wings. My Pegasus wings. So anyway... Major? Um, Kitsune, thanks for answering the four important questions. And I think we can move on to the next topic. And the next topic is housekeeping. And in today's housekeeping, I have housekeeping to tell to people. Because we here at MBS Show love playing games and we would really like to help in a charity event. So, how could we do so? Well, as of November 2nd, 2013, most of the MBS Show crew will be participating in Extra Life 2013, a 25-hour gaming marathon to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. What to expect during that 25 hours of gaming marathon? Well, expect to be a part of the live stream with Norman Sanzo. You can even join him in... Wow, I wrote this why, wrongly. Yeah, why are you talking about yourself in the third person? Because I'm not creative enough. Anyway, let me... great and powerful Trixie. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't say that. If you say if you say that name three times, Zathisto will show up. And we have amazing and wonderful Norman Sanzo. Anyway, we'll you can delight you with strange writing and yes, housekeeping that he can't even see. But um, it's all right. He's the great and powerful Norman. Sanzo. Yes, indeed. So anyway, sorry. Uh, you can join me in the game and possibly see me rage at a game. Oh my goodness, this sucks. So anyway. <laughs> Um, you could also interact. Good job, man. Good job. Oh, yeah, we're, we're supporting you all the way. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, you could also interact with guests during the live stream and get your get your questions answered. And we would appreciate if you could donate to our team. Together, we can help kids and kick cancer's buttocks. Yay! Links so, to donate are in the show notes. So, what is this children's miracle? Uh, children's miracle network is an organization where the this organization helps kids with cancer cope. It's something like um, Child's Play or those other events. But this is done... Well, this event is done eight years ago, I think. So it's an event to help children with cancers in the hospital, help them cope, help them have free games and stuff. Well, you know, free free games something really always... important that we should support. So go for yeah, it. I, I support free games, really. Yes, yeah, true. But, but cancer is... <laughs> Cancer for sick children, for si- oh shut up! For sick <laughs> children, for sick children that deserve to be happy. 
<laughs> no, def- <laughs> definitely, yeah. I mean, I joke a lot, but uh, it sounds like a worthy cause. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah so, definitely. <laughs> we, should, we should definitely. I, I, I definitely would. Well, if definitely anybody's interested out there, um, links are in the show notes. To donate to the team, well, you could donate to the MBS show, you can donate to me, and you could donate to Charlie. And um, if things goes right, maybe James would join the team? Hopefully, if not, he could join me in the live stream and we could just have fun there. And Kitsune. I am totally joining. Yes. Yay. I'm in. Yeah. And Kitsune, if you don't have the time also, just join me in the stream. You could dip around while I play game and reach at Slenderman. That, that sounds great. I like I like to dip around in my daily life, so definitely. I will get the time. I will find the time and do it because I am totally in. Well, yeah. since so this what, kind is... of, what kind of games are you going to be playing? You said you're going to be playing games for 24 hours straight, and that's that's insane. But you know, well, people have done it before. People have done a lot worse. What kind of things are you, are well, you guys going to be doing, really? One one off thing is, um, I think I'm going to try and play Steam games with people who are interested in joining with me because I do have Half Life. Oh, I'm there, Steam. Yeah, I do have Half Life, the whole collection, including. Um, you know that Steam sale where they sold Half Life for twenty bucks? I got it. Oh, orange box. No, no, it's the whole collection, like the whole collection, like Half Life. Yeah, the, the orange box, right? I think it was called. No, no, no. This one oh. was a Steam special. Like oh, they have right. Half Life One, Half Life One Blue Shift, Half Life One Green Operation. I don't know, and like all they the mods for Half Life. Various colors. Yeah, I don't know. It's... <laughs> It's strange. And also Half-Life 2, Episode 1 and 2. Eh, it's all fun. Did it have, did it have Half-Life 2, Episode 3? <laughs> That's just a dream. Then no, in I that case, I'm going to play it. Not interested. <laughs> then I woke up. <laughs> and then you woke up. Yeah. Yes. But um, also, I, I have some Steam games, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 1 and 2. Um, I have Sonic, if people want to see me play Sonic. Oh my... You gotta go fast, man. Yep, yep, indeed. And also, yeah, another thing that I'm planning... Learn. <laughs> another thing that I'm planning is to have a tabletop RPG game on. But that's still in the works and planning on how we're going to do it. So, if you want so to that, see... That sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. A tabletop RPG would would be something I would probably invest myself in. I think that, that sounds fun. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I want to join in on that, actually. I, I want to do the tabletop RPG one. Yay, cool. That one sounds fun. So if anybody wants to join in, um, I, I'll try and get the guy doing the whole system on later, on a later episode, so we can flush it out some more. But hey, um, tabletop acting. Yay, I do love the RPG things. I want to play as a bard. So you've been playing as Fluttershy? Oh no! So I oh, can. Oh, a healer. She's like a. Oh, she's a bard. She's got hordes of animals, and she sings, and stuff happens, and she doesn't do anything else. That's Pinkie Pie is more of a bard than she is. True, Pinkie true. Pie is more of a bard than Fluttershy. No, but Pinkie Pie songs only can do one status effect, which is annoying the hell out of everyone. <laughs> no, because they power. join in on a parade and they all get happy and they say Pinkie, and then everybody's cheerful again. Do they? Bards, no, bards are master. Bards are capable to do everything, but they cannot master anything. They can lockpick. They can use no, no, magic. No, no. If, if they can't master anything, that's that sounds more like rarity. <clears throat> oh. You want me to kill you, right? You are you, you are asking for it. You are calling for the pool. You are going to get the horns. Be careful. <laughs> I love this episode title. I, I haven't had a good horning in a long time. <laughs> oh god. Anyway, let's move on to news time. And in today's news I'm time. I'm going to kill this guy. I'm going to kill him and I'm going to have so much fun killing him. Oh. <laughs> okay, anyway, in today's news time. New species of pony to be added to the list. Recently, someone on Twitter asked Amy Larson if pet ponies are a different race of ponies or were they just wearing a costume. To his response, he said, in my mind... They are a different race, but I don't know if Lauren thought differently. In response to that, Lauren Faust had a reply and agreed with his answer. When asked where do they came from, she also had this to say. Deep caves inside the mountains, they guard Luna's palace. At least that's what I was thinking. Um, if you want to see the sh- links, it's in the show notes. So, guys, I'll start with... Who here wants to answer this one first? Because I'm... 
I I have feelings that you guys have a lot of opinion on this. So I want I want in on this first. Um, oh, Kitsune? Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, James, what do you think? First of all, okay. First of all, what is the obsession with this man putting wins on everything? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with? Oh wins? my god! No, no. What's wrong with wins? No, I have no problem because I love the concept of bad ponies being a real species. Uh, when I first saw them on Luna Eclipse, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Are we going to see more of them? No. <laughs> because apparently things that are cool and scary are not marketable for Hasbro. Uh, I think that we have to take Lauren Forst's canon with a pinch of salt. Remember that she was the one who said that the Piss Kitty Mark is because she produces a lot of meat methane gas <laughs> so he's like yeah that's how she envisioned it but maybe that's not how we are going to see it in the show well, in I, the th- I still show. think that's true you know with with Derpy oh, that's definitely I mean she's a gas that's how she flies you know? <laughs> yeah she propels herself instead of having a rocket she has some sort of bubble based propulsion system I thought that was Rainbow Dash sort of no Rainbow Dash shoots clouds out of her <laughs> posterior yeah yeah, rainbow flavor clouds. Oh clouds. boy! There we go. Yeah, yeah. yes. Uh, but referring to, the ba- referring to the bad ponies, I am expecting to have some sort of like Batman reference in the in the MLP comics. That's how that's going to happen. Uh, that's not likely to happen in the actual show. Mm. The actual show is a lot more controlled. But the comics, man, you know that there's going to be they a do Batman everything in the comics. The comics oh, yeah. are so free to do whatever they want. Like uh, I was reading the first. Uh, you know, the first arc with the return of Chrysalis and they have so many references and really, really, you know, awesome stuff that they could never get away with in the cartoon. So oh, this, yeah. this concept of the bad this concept of the bad ponies that it interests me but because of what they are going to do with them in the comics. Not mm-hmm. not because of what they're going to do with them in the show. Mm-hmm. They're probably never gonna show up again in the show. I mean if we're gonna be yeah. honest about that. Yeah, like, who knows? It was, Maybe they are they're gonna show up again. How I saw it was that he wanted to just, you know, how they were born in the show. And I'm, I don't know. This is my best guess. But let's say that, you know, for the purposes of that one scene, he just needed, uh, you know, something that was a little bit more themed. And he was like, oh, what if you just take, you know, your regular, regular Pegasi and just, stick, you know, bad wings on it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there you well, go, right? Well, you know, when they were writing the episodes, Lauren Faust had her design document, the so-called Bible of the show. Yeah. And it's possible that A.M.A. Larson was flipping through the Bible and he was like, a look, pointing at the bad pony, said, hey, Lauren, what is this? And they thought it was pretty cool. And they said that now Luna's chariot is being carried by two Pegasi. But instead of normal wings, they had bad wings and this uh, vertical slit pupils on their eyes and... Like, this is a lot so of conjecture. Cool. I mean, is this fact that you know it was in the Bible? Not hundred well, percent sure. That, this, that's how that's how Lauren <laughs> Faust, uh, Lauren Faust envisioned it. And if she envisioned it like that, it has to be in the design document, because in that document mm-hmm. was also the the date about uh, Scooter Lubina crippled uh, Pegasus and Twilight becoming Celestia's successor. And how Discord would act, and how, uh, and all the other names of cities that had been approved by the Hasbro's legal department. True. So that 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 show design document was basically everything that that has been appearing lately in in the series. True, but the other thing is um, why Amy Larson got the question was he wrote for Luna? Uh, sorry, um, not Luna Eclipse. Is it where is season two? Yes. Okay, he yeah, wrote for Luna um, Eclipse. Yeah, but, so I obviously that's the right person to ask. It was kind of a iffy thing to say, really, because it happened on um, Halloween night. So exactly, exactly my point. And as you just said yourself as well, you kind of have to take Lauren Faust's word with a tiny pinch of salt. And I agree yes. with that. Uh, but you know, I mean. Where it comes from, I guess, doesn't matter because people are just eating this piece of news up like nobody's business. I heard about this, uh, like, I think a day ago or two days ago. And it's it's been the buzz, isn't it? Yeah. Look at all the fun really, that's been yeah. created. Yeah, yeah, I mean... But my, my concern, my concern is the question. You see, someone asked M.A. Larson, are bad ponies a different race of ponies, or were they just wearing a costume? Now, if you look at that, how could it possibly be a costume? 
Well, there's you can dress the wings with bad with fake bad wings. But they uh, wouldn't be able to fly. No, but see, yes, magic. They will. No, they <laughs> won't. Look at it. There's no space for actual wings in the bad wings. It's not like a slip cover. It look horrible. No, it, uh, you know, it's, it's like if it's you got two socks. If you got two socks and you put it on your hands, right? But it wouldn't look like hands. It's a cartoon, including magic. They can sh- change them. No, I take this show very seriously. No, right? but Kisane, you have to remember ma- when no, magic is involved. Funny. Sorry, when magic is involved, you could, if anything, you could change certain aspects of figure and stuff. So, yes, and yeah. in the same episode, Luna <laughs> changes into Nightmare Moon and then back to Luna. What's so difficult for her to turn? To it's not a not costume, is it? In that case, it's not a no, costume. It's, 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 a, it's a disguise. It's, it's, a, dis- it's, it's a, disguise. a disguise. It's not a costume. Yeah, it's a temporary. It's a temporary yeah, but, disguise. Uh, it could, going to last forever. Like, in the context of the fact that it was a Halloween episode, you know, the, the suggestion is that it's you know something that they made. You know, it's it's a fun themed thing, and I don't think I. I mean, I, I'm more likely to believe actually that it's a different race altogether, right? True, but well, that, that, that now thing, that we have confirmation, yeah. No, but okay. Um, a reminder for most of you guys who haven't read book number nine of MLP the comic. Don't spoil me, though. No, 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 no. Ooh, ooh, um, I, I, I I'll just here. say I'll just say something here. Um, in the book, Luna uh, appears in the event that's going on, and joining her is one of her guards. Mm-hmm. Her guards. So, if you want to go online and look for it. Go look because when I say her guards, you know what I mean. So yes, they do actually, have the, you know they do have the wings. Then you basically. Say. Yes, I am looking at it right now. <laughs> they definitely have the wings and the bad ears and the vertical slit pupils. Yes, but should we point out? Should we point out the obvious thing though? What is it? What is the obvious that thing? There is something in Lauren Faust's uh, something that Lauren Faust said that changes quite a lot. You mean deep caves with you know inside the mountains they mm. guard Luna's palace. So Luna's palace is in the mountains, and it's not the same palace that Celestia resides in. I think this is a bigger piece of mm. you know suggestion. But no, yeah. that is quite possible. That, that is nothing says that they live together. We like, we yeah, exactly see so. them together and now. Now it seems that the suggestion is that Luna's palace is inside some kind of a uh, cavernous mountain, you know, infested with these little bad ponies <laughs> that hang upside down on the ceiling. Infested? Look at them. They're not, you know, they, they kind Ooh. of look like small rodents. <laughs> You're so superficial and such <laughs> so judgmental. you racist. <laughs> <laughs> so much like rarity, it's not funny. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to... I'm going to murder your ass. But okay, guys, okay, guys, 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 guys. Set up, but it had a good payoff. <laughs> <laughs> guys, come, calm down, calm down, calm down. Um, uh, as you, as we all said that this Lord... is never going to end. By the way, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I know you're going to keep teasing me about probably the whole episode. I'm having such a blast with this. Should it's not awful. have shown. You should have not shown me your shrine to rarity. If anyone doesn't know, this guy has a shrine to rarity on his blog. <laughs> like I'm looking at it right now it's just got like hundreds and thousands of pictures of Rarity in so many different styles and you haven't seen my three foot tall Rarity plushie there I have a three foot tall Rarity plushie just, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to alert you to the the reality of the situation that that <laughs> Rarity's a that's not a word <laughs> oh god <laughs> that's not a word <laughs> Indeed. No, but uh, uh, back on topic. Um, we, we have to remember that Lauren Faust is not working on the project anymore or working with Hasbro on the um, world building here. So whatever she says, we have to take it with a pinch of salt. It's now up to people working there like uh, Megan McCartney and other people to refer to that if there's going to be a deep cave in a mountain in um, Equestria somewhere. Well, if they ever go into the Bad Pony episodes and they are like, hey guys, maybe we can squeeze an episode out of this, which I completely doubt because I don't know what are you going to put out of there, uh, unless you make a Luna-centered episode. Mm. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we're going to see I'm pretty sure we're going to see it. Um, Lauren Faust left a big chunk of world left to be built, and I think Megan McCarthy is doing a good job with it. Uh, look at the Crystal Empire. I think it's 
fairly seamlessly well brought into the show. Like, yeah, every time you look at the Crystal Ponies, it, they, they need the now for $1.99 on your local Toys R Us uh, label hanging below them. But I think they they kind of belong to, to the whole uh, lore of the show. True, I true. think they, they, do the, they do have a place, is what I'm yeah, trying to so say. So far to the credit of the writers and how you know the show has been run, and absolutely to their credit, they've done a fantastic job in putting the world together yes. when they have such limited resources in the sense that Hasbro is continuously breathing down their neck to sell toys. True, you know, true. We wanted and to put Princess Twilight Sparkle in the show. How did you do that? We dedicate an entire we season have, to we can, that. We can either, you know, they, they had the choice, basically. They had the choice to do it lazily, you know, by you know just shoving it in without any thought or continuity or whatsoever. Or they could, you know, gently put it in with a little bit of foreshadowing as much as they could. I mean, I still think they could have done more. I'm talking specifically about Twilight turning into a, a hideous beast. But <laughs> hey. they, could have, they could have done <laughs> a little bit more. You mean human or Alicor? Which but, one of them? <laughs> but both. But they, <laughs> but they did what they did. In fact, you know what? You know what? I'm going to defend, I'm going to defend uh, Equestrian Girl, the Equestrian Girls and say oh, no that problem. how, how oh, they okay. handle you know, the whole issue of going to another universe and rediscovering everything. I thought they did it well. You know, I yeah. had so many bad thoughts about it. I was like, oh, how could they possibly do it? And, and then they, they said, it oh, it's just it's just Twilight. You know, it's not everyone. It's just Twilight. It's an alternate dimension. And I was like, yeah, you know what? As much as I criticize it, I can buy that. I can believe that. It's a good job. I give them, oh, you know, the credit for that. So you know. I, I was so I was so worried when they started talking about emails and text messages. I was like, oh god, they are going to spend five minutes talking and explaining her how this works. No, they don't. They focus on the important stuff, which is getting back that. Just very focused. That is such a good thing. And that, I, I, I dare say this: I have once said on record that. Let's just wait and see. I have high expectation of Equestria Girls. And to me, Equestria Girls live out those expectations. And if you want to listen, go listen to the previous episode where I had a lot of friends talking about it. <laughs> did your friends like it too? Or did you were you just uh, alone um, before before them? No, um, let's see. I had Pixel Kitties. I had Chef Sandy. I had um, Calpain. And I also had Alpha Brony. So it was an awesome... Yeah, it was an awesome group of people. We had a lot of range of opinions. Oh, so sure. do listen to it before it, the movie came out. Our reaction and stuff. <laughs> interesting, Holy interesting. crap. How did you manage to get uh, Pixel Kitties and Chef Sandy and Calpin on the show? That's awesome. I just had to ask. <laughs> you are... Uh, wow. I wish I could have been there because I love all of those guys. Oh, I wish you were there too, man. But this was yeah. before I met you. <laughs> no. But anyway, uh, honestly, this bad pony thing, it's an interesting concept. I, I can't wait to see where they go with it, if they go with it. Well, and it's I, a lot of fun. I hope me. that they do. I think the first question, uh, the first thing that we should concern ourselves with, with is uh, that we should hope that they do do something with it. Because as you said, there's a lot of raw, untapped potential in these uh, <laughs> little freaky rodent-like creatures. <laughs> and... We should we should really see if they you know bring it further. I, I can imagine a lot of episodes in the future with uh, Luna or you know traveling to where wherever Luna hangs out nowadays, and you know just having all these dudes here and there. It's pretty yeah. cool. Anyway, yeah. it's already current fandom that you know they are their own species. I think even before this confirmation, a lot of people, especially mm-hmm. in uh, the art um, writing everything, you know, um, they do treat them. As if they were their own species. Hmm. That's, how, that's how Egophiliac did it with um, Wunastak. Uh, the, mm-hmm. Those mm-hmm. The, they, the, those ponies actually, the, the way she portrayed them in Wunastak, they were like uh, moon ponies that grew wings. I think it was like that, and then they became uh, Luna's best friends. Awesome! I need to finish reading Moonstuck. <coughs> I need to read it too. So anyway, um, let's go on to the next topic. And the next topic is guest time. And in today's guest time, we have Kitsune Risu, a fanfic writer from 
FinFic and wrote a lot of good fics like Dreamflow, Romancing the Clouds, One Day, and a lot. So, Kitsune, how are you doing? Having fun yet? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of you know, shocked to be here, really. It's, it, yeah, I mean, I'm it's sorry I have to clobber you, on, I'm sorry <laughs> I have to clobber you yeah. on the side of the head. I'm I, just woke, I, just woke up, I just woke up a few minutes ago without my pants, and this guy was standing next to me. I, <laughs> oh, I no. What I'm doing here, but uh, no. Um, you know, it's, it's, an absolute, it's an absolute... It's an absolute... Let me talk! <laughs> it's an absolute honor to be on the show. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, and I'm having a lot of fun. Awesome. So, Kitsune, mind introducing yourself to the people who might not know who you are and what you do? Um, Well, okay, as mentioned earlier, I've been around in the fandom for a very long time. I have been contributing also since the very start. Uh, But, you know, as things went, I decided to become... I decided to contribute to the world of fiction writing in, you know, in a pony sort of way. Uh, and I ended up on Fimfic where I just put a bunch of the stuff that I, you know, I do really. Oh, and uh, looking here at your work, you do a lot of dark fics, a lot of adventure fics and a lot of, com- I won't say comedy, uh, romance, would you say that? I suppose you could say that, um, Basically, that's basically that's all it is. Uh, I write, I write what I want to write. In the end, um, I don't really stick to any particular genre, but I have to go with the genres that the you know that the stories reflect the most. Well, um, from I I, I I heard a writer that says, "Write what you know." That is that is true. In you know, in the end, there's a lot of uh, what I know or feel or am more comfortable with in the kind of stories that I write, which is kind of ironic because uh, before this, uh, having been a writer in other sorts of things, I used to write for magazines, uh, I used to write for school and, you know, school stuff and a lot of things. I've been contributing uh, since I was a very, very young guy. And when I decided to write, my Little Pony fan fiction. It was really more of a kind of a thing for fun at you know at, at the start. I just wanted to do interesting, curious things. Uh, the first thing that I ever did was a story called The Diaries of Any Question Overlord, oh, which okay. was published to EQD. I think back in 2011. It was it was a really long time ago. It's still up there, and I don't know anyone who's actually actually you know. I once in a while I run across someone who's actually read it, and it's always a very nice thing. But that uh, fic actually came out of an experiment that I wanted to do, which was after watching the first season of My Little Pony, I was kind of annoyed at the lack of a con of a continuity. Like, all the episodes seemed to be quite, you know, separate from each other. There was no clear universal narrative. Mm -hmm. There was no story arc, a a big one, I mean. And I was like, you know, what if uh, there was actually a story that tied every single episode in season one together, right? So... The story that I wrote is a story from the perspective of Princess Celestia as if she were a tyrannical, sort of like a overlord mm. kind of crazy, oh. crazy person, a crazy pony, actually. And I attempted to link every single episode together in terms of, of, a, of a hidden story behind the scenes. So actually what you can do is you can actually watch the whole season one and read that fix side by side and Princess Celestia would be commenting on all the things that happen in the episodes in real time as it happens. Oh. That's um, interesting. It's also written from the perspective of a journal. Uh-huh. 
So it's kind of like just a look into the insane mind of a, you know, of a ruler who's been around for a bit too long and has some unresolved issues. So the, there's, there's a bunch of other stuff that I just, I don't really want to give away, but that was generally the gist of the very first thing I wrote. Uh, and from there, I, you know, I felt it was kind of fun. And it was a good way for me to practice because uh, this was really my first uh, entry into like pure high level fantasy fiction. Whereas before I concentrated more on things like comedy and, you know, other stuff like that. So um, I just started writing more and more and more. And, you know, a lot of things came out as a result. Um, I'm probably not one of the uh, more popular writers or well known writers uh, currently. Because I've been flying under the radar, and a lot of the stuff I write is quite controversial, mm. so I don't get a lot of the mainstream audience. But as far as the fringe writer goes, I think I'm actually quite, you know, I'm quite known, thick. But I'm speaking for myself, and I should not do that. No, I, I think um, people who know your thick might know you, and your writing style is really interesting because um, there's a thick you recommended me, and it's called Dreamflow, and I read the synopsis at the beginning, or well, I read the beginning where you explain to the readers um, what's the idea for this fic, and I find that interesting. Yeah, I have I have to give a little bit of warning in my in my stories because they are very they're pretty untraditional. I would say I don't I don't write like you know the regular stuff, so you know I don't I don't blame a lot of people if they kind of like say. Uh, it, it has happened to me before. That's pretty much why. Um, where someone reads something and they go like, what is this? You know, I don't really get it. So, you know, I, I kind of have to explain a little bit about the concepts going into the uh, the stories that I write. Mm. But know, this... When you said that you are uh, fairly well-known, I can totally see that because I am seeing here how many views your stories have, like 1,500 views, 700, 400, 400, 500, 2,400 views. I mean, you, you, your stories are fairly popular. That's not, so, that's, not, that's not actually very much, you know, compared to like the really big names and a lot of the more mainstream kind of uh, stories, especially, you know, like human, human in Equestria, stories, you know, that genre that where thousands of people jump on it immediately. Uh, I have yeah, a full of people moving in. But yeah, you know, my stuff does yeah, get but You know, for your unconventional style that doesn't follow the rules, that's a, quite a hefty amount of views and visits. So you're definitely doing something right there. <laughs> I like to think so. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you're very uh, welcome. Like what James says, it's a really interesting um, uh, base you have. And I've read until I, I'm ashamed to say this, but I'm reading um, till chapter two of Dreamflow, and it's an interesting read because going back and forth from uh, the real world or and the dream world, it's really interesting. Well, I mean, I think I like to tell people a little bit about it first because I don't think they have the context of what's oh, going yeah, on. Okay, sorry. It's a uh, Dreamflow, and thank you for mentioning that. By the way, yeah, it's it's uh, one of my latest ones, which is a little bit more. Um, you know, experimental in the style, which was basically a story about Applejack getting a lot of nightmares at night and trying to figure out where they come from and what's happening. It's a little bit of a mystery. It's a little bit of a mood piece because I like to write a lot of things with atmosphere, you know. So um, in order to capture that, what I did was I wrote each chapter in two parts. The first part would be the dream, and the second part would be Applejack trying to figure out what's going on with uh, Pinkie Pie during the day. So every chapter is split between day and night. Uh, During the dream sequences, there is no dialogue whatsoever, and during the day sequences, it is only dialogue. So Mm. you have a little bit of the... um, you You have a interesting effect like i feel when when you know when that happens because there's a there's a very clear shift in tone between the day and the night and it it just bounces along on its own rhythm but overall there's a there's a nice uh, there's a nice ending mm. that 
wraps everything up together, and that's a little bit of a surprise. So when you get around to finishing it, I'd really like to know what you think. But yeah, okay, uh, I'll try and finish this because oof, reading reading fix is not an easy job. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. There are there are some crazy ass readers out there though. Like they can read tons of stuff in in seconds. Oh boy! But you know, um, I do appeal to the people who take their time with the with the story. You know, so yeah, yeah. as as you will. But okay. Okay. That's, since that's you mentioned the, since yeah, you mentioned the characters, I was wondering why did you go for Twilight? Why did didn't I go for Twilight? Yes, um, Twilight helping Applejack because. Um, in my mind, the best pony for this job would be Twilight, and Twilight helping out. And since she has contact with Princess Celestia, maybe she could ask Princess Luna for help. Yeah. Yes, that's that's what I was gonna say. Instead of going for Twilight, go for Luna. That's a much <laughs> that's a much more sensible choice. Well, you see, it's funny that you mentioned that because Luna does actually have a part to play in the story. But I'm not saying what I'm not saying what that is. Because yeah. it's kind of part of the you know the whole idea of the story itself, and the part of the mystery. So the the, the four main characters in the story would be uh, Pinkie Pie, Applejack, Luna, and Princess Celestia. And it's just pretty much about what's going on. Um, the reason why I didn't choose Twilight for this role uh, essentially is because I like writing characters, um, and some people say I do it quite well. I, I like writing about dynamics, and I've always found the dynamic of Applejack and Pinkie Pie a rather curious one. Because, uh, you know, in, in a comedy duel, for example, Applejack is one of the perfect, you know, more perfect straight men that could ever be. Mm. And Pinkie is doing nothing but bouncing all over the place. Um, I also consider Pinkie Pie to be one of the wisest ponies in you know, in the whole uh, universe of MLP. Mm. And this is just basically a lot of my head canon, but I sometimes like to try and show that these things uh, in the stories that I write, because basically that's what writing is about, right? It's about sharing ideas and, you know, opinions and everything. So my opinion was always that um, Pinkie Pie has a wealth of hidden wisdom. It's not the same as intelligence, which is what Twilight has. Um... But the best person to help, mm. because when you're faced yes. with a problem that no one can explain, what would Twilight do? Twilight would stick you in a machine, and she would try to analyze it, and it would be a story about analysis and you know the mechanical ways of figuring out what the problem is. I wanted the story to be about two friends talking. Mm. And that's all it is, really. It's about two friends talking. The whole thing is, is, is just the dynamic between Applejack and Pinkie Pie uh, beyond that of um, just the problem that's being presented. It's also the strengthening of their friendship and their bond. And that's mm-hmm. more important to me than choosing you know, the best pony for the job sometimes. Oh. To point out uh, one thing that you said uh, regarding Pinkie, I completely agree with you. She is, uh, she is wise, she is very smart. However, she is reckless. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Because, so, yeah, she knows a lot of things, but she doesn't know how to react to them many of the times. Like, when she finds the mirror pool, what is the first thing she does? She clones herself. I mean, yeah, who else knows about the mirror pool but her? But, yeah. True, true. Exactly so. Fun. And in, in that case, which is why in the fic I've actually made, um, in, that, in that particular story, I did make a lot of... Uh, you know, considerations for this kind of thing. And one of the fun parts about it is how Applejack keeps her under control. <laughs> See? So, again, it's part of the dynamic because what you have is a character which is exactly what Pinkie Pie is. In order to tap into that part of herself that can actually help, first Applejack has to, you know, get past the boundary of her being incredibly silly so in the fic they actually do come to a sort of middle ground uh, where Applejack allows her to have little bursts of silliness to get it out of the system while she you know while she talks about things and there is a point where things become very serious and that's kind of when you know Pinkie Pie also herself gets very um, suddenly 
you know, serious business itself because Pinky is not one of those kind of ponies who will continue to be silly if a friend is in trouble. Yep, she and put hands. Okay. That's what I case, feel, and that's what I think. Case in point, it's about time. Twilight is going insane with, oh my god, the disaster is coming. Pinkie Pie goes visit her to the house because she was worrying about her, mm-hmm. and the first thing she says is like, are you okay? And Twilight just keeps going crazy. Yeah, and <laughs> which is which is pretty much what Twilight would do. So yeah, there we go. True. Yeah, I think if I pretty much stops being silly at that point, like yeah, she has a couple of jokes here and there, but that's that's because you need a couple of jokes, or else the situation is way too serious mm-hmm. and not fun or entertaining enough. True. And she wouldn't really be Pinky, would she? She'd yes. be the yeah, other one with the straight hair. <laughs> True. Yeah, she would be Pink Amina. And Pink another thing I need to hair. mention for the people who are listening to this. Uh, if you're wondering, why did the Applejack just visit Luna or ask Luna for help? Because she was in that one episode where Scootaloo was having nightmares. Um, in that episode, if you guys remember or notice, Scootaloo was not interacting with Applejack that much. So she did not know Scootaloo was having nightmares. Which is kind of funny that you bring that up because I actually do bring that up in the story. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? No. I actually did. Really? really? Yeah, I actually do bring it. I actually did also considered that episode and I did bring up a small part uh, where they actually talk about Scootaloo because um, without giving too much away, halfway through the story uh, Pinkie Pie does suggest that they should go and talk to Luna but something I wouldn't say bad, but something happens that has to change the plan Oh. So yeah, it's it's layers upon layers. I mean, I could talk about it, but I would love it if all of the listeners could go give it a shot and you know just check it out. You don't have to read it; just check it out. You know, well, I have it here open and pin on my uh, Firefox. I will read it as soon as I have a couple of minutes free. Well, uh, it's not that long. The first chapter is just two thousand words, two thousand plus words long, and on average, I think the longest it would be. Uh, six, it's a 6k I think there's a 6k uh, 5k yeah it's just 5k 5.5k so it's not that long it, like mm-hmm. for most of the fictions I read is like around 10k to 11k so it's not that bad yeah those yeah, are definitely, yeah, those definitely, are definitely are longers because oh. these are these are nice little you know chunks uh, easy to manage um, chapters so yeah which is that's more or less the length of uh, or the average length of a chapter of an episode of a fanfic that has several episodes. Oh, you haven't like, read the one I have. <laughs> you haven't read the well, one I have. <laughs> uh, well, you know, back in my day in 2011, <laughs> that's more or less how the length was. You no. Know? <laughs> true, 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 true. So, um, Kitsune, I was wondering because I'm I'm keeping I'm sorry I, I keep looking at your art art for Dreamflow and did you draw this? Well, I wouldn't. I didn't draw it, but I put it together. Yeah, oh. it's it's a lot of. I just basically pulled uh, vectors out of uh, base. Yeah, I mean, I pulled it off Luna and Celestia. That's not a word. Basically, <laughs> and you know, and, you know, their cutie marks, and I put it there. But the design and the composition, yeah, I did that. Mm, okay, because I, I've been wondering because I I'm looking at most of your cover arts and. Some of them look stock and some of them look creative, like um, Romancing the Clouds. Um, it's a really good artwork. Uh, who did that one for you? I actually do most of the art of my stories myself. Oh. Uh, the ones that you actually say are stock is when I'm being incredibly lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, which, which would be for just a few of them. But for the most, I yeah, I do them myself actually I draw them myself oh this this is awesome because uh, Romancing in the Clouds it's it really looks good well again thank you very much and most of them are OCs that's the thing like um, it's all OCs yeah actually. sorry all of them are OCs and you got a griffin there you got a braided hair Pegasus I mean it's really interesting like people should just go and look for your art I conclude with Norman. I agree completely. That is really good looking. It also looks like the cover for a movie. You can totally have 
credits below it because yeah, well, I mean the I composition. Think, I, think you guys, I think you guys. are exaggerating. A oh no, oh, no, no, come on! No, I'm not saying that it should be hung up on a on uh, on a movie theater, but I'm just saying the basic composition of it. You completely nailed it because you have the three characters, their heads like kind of floating on the background, but they are very well composed in an inverted triangle, and then you have the other four characters, full body in different poses, and it's like that is very eye catchy. Um, did you did you were you inspired by something when you drew this one, or did you just uh, felt like putting it like that? I worked it out with a friend. Um, I'll, I'll give him a shout out later at the appropriate time, but uh, he he actually is one of my writing buddies, another really good writer. So I'm gonna give him a big old shout out later. Uh, he helps me with a lot of the stuff that I write uh, as a sounding board, basically, you know, just bouncing ideas and, you know, just checking checking stuff. Uh, a lot of the later things that I wrote could definitely could not have been done without him. And I'm very appreciative that he gave me the idea for the cover, like, you know, sort of like, oh, you should, you should kind of do this, you should kind of do that, you know, based on stuff he'd seen before, because I'm actually pretty terrible with picture con- uh, composition. This one just happened to come out pretty okay. But um, if this is a, your definition of pretty okay, I will say your pretty okay is <laughs> awesome in my book. Th- mm, thank you. I, I think I can do better though. Like you know, it's it's always a process That's of practice, and yeah, we can always improve in everything we do. So anyway, James, um, what you any questions? Uh, yeah, I do have. Uh, I do have uh, a couple. I hope legitimate ones. Um, so since oh, yes. you're, uh, please ravage me with your questions. <laughs> <laughs> Since you are uh, primordially a writer, um, yeah. do you have any favorite books or like favorite fanfics that you may recommend to uh, to the to the listeners or any favorite authors? Either I am, fan I am definitely going to recommend a couple of favorite authors. Uh, fan fiction, I believe, is something a little bit more personal to the reader, so I cannot actually in good conscience, give fanfic recommendations. Now, I do like the writings of quite a few, but let's let's actually look at stuff in real life. Um, first and foremost, my favorite author of all is Terry Pratchett. Wow, good, yes. And, yeah. and this, is, this is one of those that probably a lot of people in, you know, in the creative side of things like to read, but Terry Pratchett has been a great influence of mine uh, since the very start of everything. You know, the, the way he writes is good, but um, some of the other influences that I grew up with is uh, there used to be a comedy writer in America called Dave Barry, and not too many people know of him, but he's, he's another big influence. Um, I will also drop names like Ray Bradbury, um, who wrote The Illustrated Man, which is a book that everyone should read hmm. now. And, um, you know, probably a lot of the classics, like uh, Lovecraft is always fun. Mm, Lovecraft is a good one. Oh, Lovecraft. Lovecraft, is, Lovecraft taught me a lot about writing atmosphere, really. Like he's, Lovecraft he's is a difficult... He's a difficult writer to get into because... You have to be in the mood. You have to be in a mood. Yes. Stuff. You, can't, you can't just pick it up and go like, oh, I'm going to read about some horrible elder god you know, <laughs> infecting everybody with mind disease or whatever the heck it was that day. Uh, yeah, but... But truly, if you you know, if you want to be able to capture a world with a lot of feeling and emotion, I definitely think Lovecraft is one of the the best ones to do that. Um, yeah, if you know, if I am, I'm going to sound like a total snob right now, but if you want, if you want a cheap thrill and you want like horror that you can consume quickly, you should go to Stephen King. You should go to like uh, one of those writers who can write something really quick, has really simple, uh, really easy d- descriptions and all that. But if you want something heavy, something that is going to draw you in, go for Lovecraft. I mean, the man wrote two pages just to say that it was a cold windy day on Antarctica <laughs> yeah, which, is, which is something that a lot of people hate you know that's the that's the kind of thing about that's the problem with uh, with with this with this sort of style of writing I feel you know you've, you've got you've got two sides of the argument one that like absolutely says 
yes, go for the long descriptions. Why? Because creating that atmosphere, you know, creating the world is incredibly important. And then there's the other side of people. This is never open a story talking about the weather. And here you have a guy who dedicates, as you said, two entire pages just to talk about the weather. So, yeah, if we were to speak presence. about the... Yeah, if we were to speak about that whole dread, dreaded purple prose that appears so much in, in 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 this fandom, this fandom hates the whole purple prose. Oh thing. yes, I know. I I, I don't. I actually that. do that a lot. That is basically the foundation of my writing. Is incredibly purple stuff. I spend ages describing things in excessive detail just for the point of setting up a scene, which I feel is important. You know, some people like it, some people don't, you know. So that's, yeah, exactly, that's, yeah. Exactly, that's why when, when hearing advice, you have to be very careful in that you have to follow the advice that fits what you want to do. Because if you want to do purple prose, don't read uh, how to, on someone who says purple prose is the worst thing you can do to your fanfic. <laughs> uh, personally, I think that's, a, that's something that Lovecraft did very well. Uh, something that Tolkien with Lord of the Rings did to a T, I think he even perfected it. So, oh, if you want purple prose, if you want super long descriptive uh, atmosphere, yeah, Lovecraft is a good option. And going back to uh, Terry Pratchett, I am trying to get. I, I read the Color of Magic. That no, is Color a great. Magic. Color of Magic wasn't even like one of his good ones. I don't even consider that like his best. It was a good one, but he's done a lot That's, more and a lot better. Which um, is why I have to ask you: to, Can you recommend me a, another one better than The Color of Magic? No, I'm like, just going to say this: any book in the Vimes series, the Night Watch series, is that's the one I'm reading now. It's a definite. Uh, it's a definite gore. I think. I think Night Watch was actually the first one in the series which stars these uh, bunch of characters because he he does the thing where he has like a, a ensemble cast and each book is dedicated to just uh, you know the one or two of them. And uh, the Commander Vime series, the Night Watch series, is the one that I like the most. Uh, so I would definitely recommend going online and checking out his entire library and picking out the books. Which are, which star this guy because it's actually a con, it's actually a continuity. All the books are linked, in in a manner of speaking, because you actually see the evolution of this guy, you know, the progression of this one character. So it's it's a very awesome. fascinating thing. Whereas uh, in Color of Wind, the, the main character Rincewin the Wizard is pretty much a static character in the sense that he usually stars in the same kind of story as himself it changes but not too much so it's always the same character whereas uh, this guy is a lot deeper and that's why I like him yeah and like uh, Rinswin is like always the butt of all jokes he's always getting in trouble and getting out of it in he's a bit of a better side of way yeah, yeah he's, an anti he's a complete anti-hero because he doesn't want to get in those situations however I agree with you in that Vines is a much more interesting character and I have only read halfway through uh Nightwatch, which is the book that I'm reading now. Yeah. And I started reading it because um, I was reading it a little bit on the store, and the character of Bimes kind of grabbed my attention because he reminded me of Russell Crowe from <laughs> Gladiator. Oh, no. Was, oh, no. <laughs> he, does, I, he does not just go around punching people in the face. Well, okay. No, I mean the does, way... But... No, I, know, I don't mean at, uh, uh, the way he acted. I mean the way he looked, the way they describe him. I am like, oh, I can't imagine this guy as Russell Crowe. He's it's pretty Russell, kind yeah. of fun. He'd be Russell yeah. Crowe in Les Miserables. <laughs> you know, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just, just well, ask mean, he will be a terrible basically a, That's not a word. Cop. <laughs> yeah, but he's unlike... That's not a word. Cop. I mean, Vimes is... is a, That's not a word. But, oh, wow, so many swear words in this episode. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, man, but, yeah, but he's a jerk, but he is likable in that you want him to succeed. You want him to win. You want him to win. You do, you do. He has depth, you know. We can we yes. can identify with the character, and that's what I like about him. You know, I I, I say you know, uh, Terry Pratchett definitely. Whoever has not read the Discworld series or Terry Pratchett series, go look for it. You know, check it out. It's got he's written like thirty five books in the series. I think it's like thirty seven now, maybe maybe even more actually. But um, 
probably well worth the investment. It's if, of course, if you like the lighter stuff, there's nothing wrong with a little Stephen King. Um, but there's then again, there's nothing wrong with a lot of books. You know, some people even swear by Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> oh, God, yes, yeah, stay away from Stephanie Meyer's books. Which is which is interesting because you know, talking about it, I do love the purple prose, but I do not like Stephanie Meyer that much, and she's all about the purple. Oh, no. Everything. There's a lot of purple things in her book. But you need you need to know how to use the purple prose to your uh, to good purpose. There's <laughs> bad purple prose with Twilight, and there is bad purple prose with uh, uh, good purple prose with Lord of the Rings. Yes, exactly. So, so Lord guys, of the Rings was done appropriately, you know, in in that sense. I think. Guys, yes, um, I agree. If you don't mind explaining, what does purple prose mean? Where did where did that term even come from? Actually, I will I will explain I will explain yeah, it to you. Too. Okay, so uh, back in uh, back in the 15th century, no, like, back in the Renaissance, I think it was, uh, the color purple was considered to be the color of royalty, the color of the higher classes. Uh, so anytime someone had a, a tear on their clothes or something broken, they will sew something purple on it to fill in on the spaces, thinking that it will look richer. And in, instead, it looks absolutely horrible. So the, the, the term purple prose comes from all that descriptive dialogue and all that descriptive test that adds absolutely nothing, but you think is going to make the text look a lot richer. Ah. So that is called purple prose, because it's like a purple color that meant to be something of a higher class. Mm. That's what it, that is actually... Really fascinating. I had no idea. Like I, I know of the term, but I actually did not know that story. That is there very was cool. a there was that a was Google very... Docs. I think I still have it. There was a Google Docs where it explained the different kinds of process that there was. There was like um, let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, please do. That sounds like something it was I posted. It was posted by. Uh, I think it was Calpain from Equestria oh. Daily, and I have kept it closed because it was a really good uh, guide for it. I think it's not here anymore. No, I think it's. I, could I think always, it's completely. I think it's gone. I could always ask Calpain about it, but no. Um, when you were oh, talking about oh, someone's dropping names, <laughs> oh, hush you! But anyway, um, when you were talking about Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft is H.P. Lovecraft, right? The guy who, yeah, of course, ah, yeah, Howard Phillips Lovecraft. How many people do you know whose name is Lovecraft? <laughs> yeah, he's unique because he didn't have any children. He had no des- uh, descendants. And no one else in the world had the name Lovecraft. He killed everyone who had that name just so that he could be alone and unique. <laughs> uh, no, but still, um, he he's one of the guys who wrote D&D, right? Mm, no. Oh, really? No, no. that was... No, no he, that was he, Eddie he Gygas. Oh. Yeah. Lovecraft lived um, a bit... Too early for D and D, I think. Just, just a little bit. Mm, so, what, what does it? Do? I don't know, but <laughs> my book here. Um, so he was born in uh, eighteen ninety. Ah. So probably not one of the forefathers of D and D. But uh, what he did actually was he wrote the Cthulhu universe. Mm. Yeah, the Cthulhu which, universe, he which has Cthulhu lent me. itself to hundreds and thousands of things. Across the world, like it, it's it's one of those things that has invaded, um, you know, the public sphere with its face tentacles, <laughs> and, and it's just it's just a, a pervasive sort of like a because it's it's no longer under copyright, so everybody just uses it for whatever. I see because when when everybody's mentioning um, Lovecraft, because um, he's well known for Cthulhu, so that's why I was mm-hmm. thinking. He made up Cthulhu. He made up a lot of other stuff as well. Like, Cthulhu is just one of many elder gods in his universe. Uh, An an alien species, and and, uh, urban legends, and horror stories. Like, uh, there was that the the case of Charles Dexter Dexter Ward. It's (laughs) all about... uh, It's a horror ghost story, and... During the first five chapters, he is just telling you the location of every single house in the town where it takes place. It's a huge build-up for a very short payoff, but it's such a good payoff. And by that point, you are you don't want to get out of your house because of how terrifying it is. 
the pay, the payoff is definitely elevated by the sense of uh, of what you get. You know, the journey is what helps with the eventual drop. You know, at yeah. the end. Uh, so that's his style of writing, which I like. So today in podcasts about books, <laughs> which is, well, well, ponies, we're not talking about what's that. Well, no, <laughs> we are experts on books. You know. Okay, I'm gonna bring it. Yeah, I'm gonna bring it back to My Little Pony. But you know which character really reminds me of Cthulhu? Um, who? Discord. Rarity. <laughs> I am going to murder because you so many times you're going to lose track. Oh my she's god. She's just got she's just got things running off her face. That's it. You're 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 carving you're digging your own you know, grave. The way she screams I, I don't know. Oh my. Well, um I think we should move away from calling Verity names. It's going to be a running joke, I'm loving it. <laughs> Seriously, though, I am one of those people who enjoys seeing their favorite characters suffer. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like some of my favorite episodes are her suffering like a, like a. That's not a word. I don't think um, I want to. I don't think I want to be your friend anymore. For some <laughs> Why? Because I don't know. Are you gonna make me? Are you gonna put me? In, are you gonna enjoy my suffering and my? Pain? I enjoy your suffering. Yes, I love it. <laughs> anyway, I. I think uh, that's most of the questions we have for you, uh, right, James? Um, I honestly have no more questions, and thank God, because if I ask another thing, we're going to be like this all day, so <laughs> we, th- we think we can move on if you want. Indeed. So, um, if we don't have any more questions, I think we should move on. And thank you, Kitsune, for being on and sharing your insights with us, because... Absolutely. Wow. Thank you for having me. That was an interesting talk on books, because um, this is one of those episodes where I call it one of the co-host episodes where my co-hosts have more say in what I have to say, and this is one of those episodes. Oh, God. Now I feel so guilty because no, 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 like, no. I am it's... taking over the show. No, it's, it's a good don't, thing. Don't it's... feel guilty. We made it better. Yes, indeed. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> uh, I, I wish I had some... I wish I had a horribly racist Chinese version of that, but I just, I just don't. <laughs> Nobody specters the Huns. <laughs> what are you talking about? Everybody expected the Huns. They were freaking everywhere. They were riding across on their piss horses and killing everything. Like, they killed everything in Asia and in Russia. And I don't know. Did they even go to? Did they even go to France at one point? I, I just that's the joke. joke. But that's the joke. It's ironic. Everybody expected the Huns. You know, just like hiding in their huts, going at the Huns out there and. <laughs> you broke me. You broke me. Okay, We're anyway. Broke. Yeah. No, man. Oh, no. Good, I can take over the show now. This show is mine. <laughs> hey, shut up. I was still first. Get out. It's my show now. All right, but you got to get me on as a guest a few more times. <laughs> ah, yeah, we need to bring you on. Oh, oh, oh God, what am I saying? We, I'm not even part of the money. <laughs> I am taking over know, the show this guy, for This guy has plans, and you better watch out for him. Oh, okay. my God. Uh, anyway. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> Uh, I don't love this much. I don't love this much all the time, but when I do, I do it a lot. <laughs> anyway, kids, where can they find you? Online. Online? Yes. Hiding. <laughs> no. Oh no, you can you can get me on that. Uh, <laughs> I, why would I hide under my own bed? No, under Norman's bed. Oh my! Why would I hide? I, that, that is gross. Why would I? Why would I hide under his bed if I wanted people to find me? Are, are a lot of people hanging around Norman's house? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, your logic has holes in it, my friend. All right. No, but okay, seriously, <laughs> seriously though, the best place to get me is in my fiction account. I post blogs up there, you know, my writing is up there. Uh, if anyone sends me messages or anything, I always respond. So that's the best place to, you know, come say hi and make a new friend, maybe. Awesome, awesome. I'll add that into the show it. notes. I'll add that into the show notes. Oh, boys. Oh, that was a good laugh. Oh, <laughs> my. So anyway... <laughs> Let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is shoutouts. My shoutout goes to you, James. Thank you for coming on and backing me up. Oh, you're more than welcome. He's like, hey, 
On that respect, I have to say, Charlie sent me a very heartfelt message the other day on DeviantArt. Where he basically said that he thanked me for hanging for hanging out here with you, giving you a hand, and backing you up. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm not worthy. Uh, I feel so humbled that you guys feel like you can count on me, and it feels so good because I'm like, yes, this is, this is awesome. Uh, I just love doing this thing. So thank you, thank you so much, man. No problem, no problem. You you're a great guy. You always help out a lot. Thanks, just thanks for being there. Oh, you're very welcome. And my second shout-out goes to you, Kitsune. Thank you for being on our show and making it more oh, smarter. Thank you. No, I think I've uh, lowered the intelligence of all your listeners and probably you and James as well. So. Oh, my. Hey, you know what? It doesn't matter because now you're smarter than all of us. <laughs> Hell yeah. In comparison. Hell yeah. In comparison. I, I came out the winner of this little competition, didn't I? Indeed. But indeed. you're not smarter than Purple Smart, also known as Toilet Sparkle. Yeah. No, no one no one is smarter than Twilight. But indeed. Not, no one is smarter than Filey. Hmm. But anyway, James, what about you? Any shout outs to give out to? Uh, aside from giving a shout out to both of you guys for being so awesome and so much fun to hang out with and lifting my spirits because before this episode started I was feeling so bad and depressed and now I am so peppy and happy I'm like yes I'm going to eat the world right now I am so pumped up I want to give a shout out to my good old friend Fall Papers uh, um, for traumatizing him with all the things that I reblog on my Tumblr uh, <laughs> making him remember why he has to go back to work and stop looking at Tumblr Indeed. So my shout out goes, goes for him He's a wonderfully British man who deserves all the love that he gets and more. Indeed, indeed. And your stream last night was awesome. <laughs> That's where I found I found out that four papers get traumatized. <laughs> <with everything. laughs> indeed. Uh, what about you, Kisine? Any shout-outs to give out to? Well, yes, I shall flow along with the river and give a shout-out to you, Norman, oh. and James. It was really nice to meet you and this a really been a lot of fun uh again I, I say this a lot but thanks very much for having me on the show uh besides that though i would like to give a shout out to a couple of people who have been quite instrumental in my writing and i would like to give a shout out to Jono, crack javelin and ken wolf and also all the cool guys that i know in a little group that I have, as well as a little RP group that I have. Thanks very much for all the help. Thanks very, very much for all the support. And, uh, you know, keep going, you guys. It's been fun. Awesome. I'll I'll keep that in mind and write it down in the show notes. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbshow at gmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, you could reach me at norman at mbshow.com and daniel at uh, mbshow.com. And Twitters, we have Twitters. You can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS show, and you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. I basically tweet about food, toys, and what's going on. And you can also reach Daniel at St. Pinky. And James, what are you? You have the Twitters? I do have the Twitters. You can contact me at, uh, at James Cork on Twitter. You can check my Tumblr on askmovieslate.tumblr.com and my DeviantArt at jamescork.deviantart.com. Awesome. And Kitsune, like you mentioned before, you don't have any Twitters, right? No, unfortunately, I don't do the Twitters. Okay. So it's just basically your film freak account then? My film freak account, yeah. I used to have a Tumblr once that I posted one thing in like two years ago and then I forgot my logon details. So oh, God. That's, 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 for, the yeah, that's, that's for, for the best. That's for the best because the less, the less websites you have, the more life you have. So that's good. <laughs> oh. It sure saves me a lot of time when I'm sitting down in my room doing nothing. <laughs> you, you can't take away that time. That's important time. But uh, yeah. yeah. I, I just I don't really do all the uh, social you know, like I don't have an ass blog like uh, like I recently came across your ass blog James which, uh-huh. which is full of interesting things and I must <laughs> say that I quite like the, the concept is actually very interesting to me so definitely I want to check that out uh, a little Thank bit you. more we were talking about uh-huh. it before the show and uh, I like that uh, uh, up to the point where I, I stumbled upon Raritopia <laughs> <laughs> Which is, which is a 
section, which is a section of his blog, which is dedicated to a, a certain smarmy. That's not a word. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not answering this question because you because cannot you admit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but uh, yeah, I just like I just like to say seriously now, Rarity is actually one of my favorite characters. I joke a lot about that because <laughs> he is a horrible person, but uh, I I do actually like Rarity quite a lot. Um, oh, she's, during... she's really enjoyable. She's a lot of fun. <laughs> I like to laugh at her. <laughs> oh my! Do you, do you know what they say about those who have big egos? It's easier to make fun of them. <laughs> oh yes, that could not be true for Rarity. Yeah, she, she so does have that huge ego. That, oh man, I can totally defend you on that. You know what? If you like Rarity for that, hey, all the more love for her. <laughs> she is so underrated. I hate when she doesn't win in the favorite polls. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> Well, tell me about it. I mean, I like Applejack as well. Like of the main six, Applejack is probably my favorite. If I had to Applejack rank them, I don't like them. But uh, and she always comes as last in everything. You know? Yes, that's so Just, not. That's so not fair. Uh, I guess yeah, Applejack is my second favorite, by the way. So, so I tell you what. Yeah. Message of the day to all the listeners of the MBS show. Everybody, give more of your love to Rarity. Give more of your love to Applejack because they need it. And anyway, um, also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Links can be found in the show notes. I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been James Cork. And this is Kitsune Risen. I'll catch you next week if I'm still alive. <laughs> We're going to kill you with laughter. <laughs> Why? Who knows? So we've got to talk about Celestia's policies now, right? Oh no. Yes. Anyway, bye so, guys. Uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. We have to consider the sociological implications of her new IP. The day begins. She makes herself look pure. I know she'll turn some heads up. Divine, also sublime. She gets to work, and don't you know, stitching time saves night. When they all see her come around, you know there's something there to be found. A lush beauty, like a diamond ring. Of the highest rarity And even more beautiful inside Reach way down deep and I'm sure you'll find That she can bring that little something called generosity So elegant as she waltzes across the room Shine now Her diamond will come soon Now let's use just what we know Come on now, let's go, go, go And dance the night away Until we all have to go Come watch the moonlight reflect off her sapphire eyes I'll stick by you forever and every single day To forge and reinforce the bonds that tie Now come and join me in harmony This is the best possible thing She'll be here waiting for you all to break
That's what everyone should say, both uh, writers, artists, and everyone who is doing any kind of artistic... Uh, Not even art, you know, material. like the people in the government should be saying that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that's, not about that. that's for later, that's for Equestrian Politics 101. We are not going to talk about politics. Oh, is, is this not Equestrian Politics Hour? I'm sorry. I, no, I thought, no, no, I thought this, this was... Is, this because, is the you know, Prin- Princess Celestia's latest... You know, concepts on how to deal with foreign labor is, is terrible. Oh, no, don't, get, don't get me started. It's terrible. Don't get me started on Celestia Care. I think I'm that's going to be You know about the deportations, right? I mean, it's just like, what? Why? 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 Oh, yeah, but... why? I mean, she's kicking all of those donkeys outside of the border. <laughs> is it, is it, the poor donkeys are going out there trying to find a job and then they're going back to their other leaders who are so suck. And this, this woman, she's, this pony princess is completely heartless. I don't, um, don't, I don't agree, agree, agree with a lot of the things that she does. You know, but yeah, I, I, guess, I, I guess that's for you know, um, a, later, a later time. But yeah. Anyway. But what, about, what about the changeling scanners? Anytime you try to go, you have to be fully scanned to prove that you're not a changeling. That's an invasion of privacy, man. <laughs> uh, let's move on. So, James... <laughs> Oh, that's good.